I'm thinking about this sense of um, consciousness that we have, this feeling of being, and how significant it seems to be, to me at least, that we don't just feel uh, conscious, we don't just feel that we kind of exist, we feel that we exist in a particular place. You know, it's that Alan Watts thing about be here now. It, not, it isn't just that we are being, we're being here, and we're also, of course, being in at a particular point in time as well, but it's this, it's this being spatially located thing that I'm quite interested in right now. God damn it, there's something coming on the path, I hate that. Oh well, I'll carry on. Uh, yeah, the fact that we're spatially located, and everything about our senses tells us whereabouts in space we are, and gives kind of meaning to that, I suppose. Uh, I suppose, ultimately, I'm coming out of some thinking about motricity, what Rudolf Linas calls motricity, and elsewhere it's called uh, motor cognition. The significance of the fact that we are not sessile beings, we don't just exist like a plant or a tree or a piece of mould on the back of a log, we are, we move about, you know, we're not, uh, we respond to the environment and everything about our senses and about our, morning, and about our organism uh, reflects that motricity, that ability to move you know, there's no point in having sensors if you can't do anything with the information they provide. It's only meaningful to have eyes if those eyes give you information that allow you to do something with that information, to move the, towards the thing you can see or to move away from the thing you can see. Uh, it only makes sense to have pain receptors if you can respond to that pain by retracting from it. It only makes sense to have pleasure sensors if it if you're capable of moving towards the, the source of that pleasure, those kind of things. And it's the same with all of the uh, the sensory organs, really. And that's the that's the principle that underpins motricity in Rudolfo Linas's terms, or motor cognition more broadly. Right. Morning. Do occasionally get fishermen down here on the canal. So anyway, that's the, that's the place I'm coming from. That 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 uh, that idea that our our sense organs uh, are intimately tied up with our motor system and those things give us and well, give shape to our cognition and our consciousness. But it seems to me inevitable as part of that that that, uh, that sensory engagement with the world based on our ability to move through it is dependent upon knowing where we are at any one moment in time because it doesn't make any sense to move around in the world if you don't know where you're moving from. So, as I say, implicit within motor cognition and uh, motricity and any kind of sensory motor model of consciousness is the sense that consciousness is located at a place, at a particular uh, location in space. Uh, and, our, and, and everything about our sensory engagement tells us that. I mean, I can hear the dog barking, this little puppy went past there in the garden. And uh, that sound is coming at me from a direction. And it's quite different to that slight hissing sound that's coming at me from, uh, from over there. You know, these, these two sounds are in different... Uh, 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 they're differently located in space around me, and I, I, I know that because they also tell me where I'm located, those sounds. And similarly with seeing, you know, I'm looking around and I'm the, I'm the, I'm the point where all these perspectival lines cross, you know, and the triangulation point for everything that I see. Um, and, and the whole logic of perspective and the whole logic of things diminishing with distance and, uh, and the logic of one thing being obscured by something behind it. That, all that logic tells me where I am and again locates me physically in space. I have to say that it's a slightly different space. The, the, the lines of sight triangulate my centre of being, if you like, in a slightly different place to the one that my sense of hearing does. And again, my proprioceptive sense uh, places me in a slightly different place, but I'm, I'm basically located in this sort of cloudy constellation of spaces clumped inside my body, I think. So, so all of my sensory organs, as I say, are, giving me, are locating me in space and providing me as a with a, a centre from, from which motricity is enabled, I think. Now, why am I talking about that? Oh yeah, yeah I was thinking about, um, well, I kind of think about out-of-body experiences, and I was thinking about um, mystical experiences, uh, 
alternative states of consciousness. And one of the things that I've come across quite a bit in the reading around that, and to a certain extent experienced myself, is that feeling of dislocation when you're not where your body is. Uh, and I think there's two versions of that, both of which I have a little bit of experience of. One is, uh, you know, feeling that you are somewhere else, you know, the classic out-of-body experience. You still feel as if you are located at a point in space, but that point in space has somehow become detached from where you are, you know, you, so you can, like, see yourself, that kind of stuff. That's a relatively easy um, experience to, to, uh, in, to evoke, actually. It's, it's, it's very simple techniques for giving yourself that experience. Uh, so you still feel like you're located in space, you still feel as if you're, you're sitting behind a pair of eyes, but those eyes are somewhere outside of where they should be, really. That's the first one. And the second one, which I think is in many ways is more interesting, is the one where you feel distributed across space. So you're no longer located at a point, but you're, you just feel yourself to be spread out across you know, sometimes a really wide area of space. I mean, this is the experience that Jill Bolte Taylor talks about in that uh, TED Talks uh, thing that she does, uh, A Stroke of Insight. I think she's a neurologist or a neuroscientist, and she, um, she has a stroke, a literal, you know, a, a stroke in her brain. And she has that kind of unique experience of being able to internally witness a, cog a really unusual cognitive process with all of the knowledge that a neuroscientist brings to that experience. And she describes it very articulately as this uh, this feeling of expanding. So she feels herself expanding so she's no longer, not exactly confined, but no longer located within her own body, but is spread out across the whole of the room. Uh, I think it's also an experience that, uh, what's he called, Michael Persinger talks about. He's a Canadian neuroscientist, I guess, brain scientist. He does these things with what he calls transcranial magnetic stimulation, where he's got this like big magnet, big one-shaped magnet that he waves next to your head, and it does something to your brain, presumably detaching these uh, some some of that information about where you are that your senses provide, detaching that from that sense of agency about your sense of being, and, and again you get this feeling of being distributed across space. Come on, pups. Uh, yeah, fascinating, I think, all that. I'm not sure it has a wider significance. I mean, people tend to associate these things with mystical experiences, as if you're kind of touching the face of the cosmos or something. I'm not totally convinced by that, although who knows. It feels to me like it's just different parts of what it is to be a human being coming apart. The part that's fueling your sense of agency and intention, intentionality, becoming detached from this part of you which is... Uh, as I say, located in space because we are not sessile organisms, we are motile organisms. Yeah, that's what I think anyway, who knows.